Uh, so another topic which is very, very important in microbiology is infection control. Uh, in fact, these days, infection control is like hot topic in microbiology. Uh, even, you know, I think in whole hospital, infection control has become very important. So from examination point of view also, a lot of new questions, this sort of a new topic, a lot of, uh, you know, new questions can come. So we'll talk about the infection control. When you talk about infection control, the first thing which comes in your mind should be your BMW, biomedical waste management. So in biomedical waste management, what are things are important we are going to talk now, okay? So in biomedical waste management, if you see, uh, see this, uh, you can see biomedical, uh, biomedical waste is BMW, shortcut is BMW, they say biomedical waste management, okay? So what are the color codings? The only these four colors we have, okay? That means we have yellow color, yellow color, yellow color bag usually, or it can be the box. box and the red color, red color coding, and then we have white one, white is basically the puncture proof container, translucent, and then the blue, blue is basically cardboard box with the blue color, only these four, not black color. So in examination, if in the option, if they give which color coding is not present, black is not there, green is also not there. Green, these are of a general waste, okay? General waste means like all the wrappers, the food products, you know, all those, uh, the regular used ones, okay? Those things will not come under BMW. So they are separate, they are uh, different. So in examination, which of the color coding it means, you have to say yellow, red, white, and blue. These are the four codings we have for the biomedical waste management. Now each one, now we're going to each coding. So yellow, how to remember? I'm going to revise it very quickly because exams are nearing and you must be like, you know, already knowing everything. So still, okay. So now uh, when you go to the color codings, we are going to talk about a uh, little bit about these color codings now. Uh, so first is the yellow bag. So in yellow bag, you can see, so it can be a bag. You can have bag or this content. Okay, this is the yellow bag. Or it can be the box, you know, like yellow color box, whatever. Okay. So when you talk about yellow color, what are the things? See, the shortcut to remember this is remember like yellow. Yellow fellow. Yellow sounds like a fellow. Huh? Fellow. Yellow fellow. Yellow fellow means what? Fellow means it's a man, right? Any man. So man means any human waste. Okay. Human waste. So human ka friend is who animal. So any animal waste. Okay. Human waste or animal waste. Okay, and also animals and human donor friends going to microbe. Microbe is I'm talking about microbiological waste. Okay, microbiological waste. So the shortcut is this only human, animal, microbiological waste. Yellow, fellow, man, man, friend, animal, animals, friend is microbe. Plus, apart from this waste, man, ko kya chahiye? whenever man gets sick, he needs what blood transfusion. That means blood bag. Okay, he will take a blood bag. And also, he, he might need cytotoxic drugs. Whenever he has a cancer or whatever, he takes cytotoxic drugs, okay? The shortcut to remember, okay? I'm just giving clues, okay? Shortcut. So, blood bag and blood bag and cytotoxic drugs. And finally, what happened? These things will not work for him. And he, when he's severely sick with cancer and what happened? He has to die. When he die, what happened? We are burning him in the fire. Fire. I mean to say, incarcination. Fire means the... the I'll tell you how you're discarding these items by incarcination, incarcination, or other one is deeply bury. You bury the dead body in a deep, in a deep bury the dead body, right? When you talk about a human animal, when someone die, you put them in the fire or deeply bury them, okay? Bury them. This is a shortcut. So now what are the ways? The question will be asked are, so as I told you already, it is the human waste. It is a human waste, human may see. Example, the question was asked was this, placenta. Placenta or a dead fetus, you know, placenta or dead fetus, where it will go, a placenta or dead fetus, this was a question asked, they'll give you the pigeon where it go, yellow, yellow fellow, anything with him, and these are the tissues, you can see human tissues, okay, any human tissues, human after surgical, post-surgical, whatever the tissues you're, remo you're removing, you know, those tissues, any animal, I mean, so any human or animal waste, see, that the dead mice, so this is animal one, so they, they ask you this question, please make sure these things go into yellow fellow, yellow fellow, okay, and apart from that, See, all these swabs, all the swabs, you know, the swabs or cottons, which is contaminated with the pus or blood or whatever, all these things will also go into, where? because these are the things you're doing in human only, right? human or animal when you're doing surgery. So these waste will go into yellow bag only. Okay, that's also a question. And other one is your, apart from that, the most important thing you have to remember is this, all your 
uh, PP except gloves. Gloves will not come in because gloves is recyclable one. Okay, gloves. So apart from that, your mask, your shoe cover, head cover, everything, all these things will go into yellow bag only. That is one thing because these are not, uh, these are not plastics. These are like, you know, you can just discard it easily. So it goes there. Okay. And another important thing or two important things, very, very important is your blood bag. Remember, blood bag. Blood is red color, but it doesn't go in red bag. This is the only exception. Though it's a plastic recyclable, but you know it will it will not go in red bag. It will go in yellow bag. Remember, okay? Red blood will not go into the red blood bag. Will not go into yellow bag. It will go into it will go. It will not go into red bag. It will go into yellow bag. This question was frequently asked, so please remember. And other one is your cytotoxic drugs. That's what I told. Blood bag and cytotoxic. I gave you clue here. These two questions are frequently asked. They'll go into yellow. So now after that, what happens? So these are the items discarded. First point is these are the items discarded. Okay, and after discarding, how to do, how to do pre-treatment? So pre-treatment, what you do, especially if it is uh, the microbiological waste or whatever, what we are doing, we are doing a uh, autoclaving it in a special autoclave bag. We have to autoclave that, autoclave these substances, autoclave whatever the things before you know, sending it for the final uh, disposal. We have to do autoclave. Okay, we have to do autoclave autoclave or hydroclave whatever it is but we have to do a pre-treatment and after pre-treatment the last step is final step final step what happened the yellow bag what do you do for yellow bag usually asked question is incineration in incineration means you are burning it in a very high temperature that is incineration okay that is the in in a, your heating it in a very high temperature that was the question asked incineration uh, otherwise what's the next one plasma pyrolysis plasma pyrolysis plasma pyrolysis these are the uh, common two things and if that is not possible you're going deep burial deep burial i told you if man dies you bury him okay you bury him or put in the fire so that's what i told fire or deep bury the human or the animal when someone is dead same way you're going to do here also all these ways you're going to do this thing okay so uh, so what about this see here uh, even microbiological waste when you talk microbiological waste all the cultures you know after we doing the culture the cultures medias whatever comes you no know, those things also will go in yellow bag only Remember that, okay. The inside that culture, media, whatever the cultures, the organism gone, those things, okay. That is, that is if you want to say, example, I write it here. All your culture medias, culture medias, culture medias, okay. All the culture medias and all the, uh, whatever the things you have used for growing the microbe, those things will go in the uh, yellow bag. And finally, instant plasma. Array. So these are the questions can be asked for yellow bag. So if they ask for yellow bag, please remember yellow fellow. Fellows are humans, so humans, friends, or animal and the microbe, anything related with these things, already picture is here. And then apart from that, add man, human, fellow, catch you, blood bag, you, cytotoxic drug. Ah, and for cytotoxic drug, cytotoxic drug, how you do, you just don't, you have to put in yellow bag and send expired drugs or cytotoxic, cytotoxic drugs. What you do is that you have to, uh, you put in yellow bag and send it to the manufacturer. Manufacturer, they will do the final incineration or deeper they will do but send it to the manufacturer okay that will that not be asked don't worry but please remember these are the things for yellow bag okay you are now sure about the yellow bag so first one is over yellow bag is over now now the second color now the second one is now the second one we are going to uh, talk is the red bag red color bag yeah? red which is the red bag so red color shortcut is very simple r for r so r for all the recyclable items recyclable items okay recyclable plastic item what which can be recycled the plastic items can be recycled so recyclable plastic items so in examination what are the questions you can expect is that they will ask you these things uh, where you will discard all the plastic syringes not the needle part, not the sharp part. I'm just saying only the plastic blood, okay? The plastic syringe, this question was asked. Plastic syringe will go in the red because you can uh, you can recycle it. And all the vacutainers, plastic vacutainers, vacutainers, these things, see, all these plastic, these are plastic vacutainers, okay? Plastic vacutainers, even the Eliza plate, plastic Eliza plate, the Eliza plate, Eliza plates, the plastic ones and all, okay? Those things. And apart from that, very, very important, few important things are what? Your question they're going to definitely ask this iv catheters not the needle part just the catheter plastic iv catheters tubes and also your euro bag and euro catheter euro bag and catheter no all those things catheter see this picture this one this euro bag on the the catheter part okay catheter euro bag everything goes in the red bag see urine is yellow color but it doesn't go in yellow bag it goes in the red bag blood bag is red color but it goes in the yellow bag so two opposite features so please remember okay anyway you will even if forget also you will remember how all the plastic things all will go in the 
resecure except what all the except blood bag will not come because blood again again i'm saying all the plastic will go here except the blood bag blood bag because because of blood and there are other the way of uh, disposal is different so the blood bag will go in the yellow bag the blood bag will go in yellow bag that's the only exception otherwise all the plastic things will go in the red bag so you can expect question from here okay and which is the other thing other than in pp which is the plastic gloves the gloves was also asked many times so please gloves can be recyclable because they are plastic they are they are uh, the metal is plastic so you can recycle it so this also will go in the red bag only so you got it so these are the questions they can anything plastic plastic syringe iv set tube euro bag catheter they all go in the red red means recyclable r for r r for recyclable okay now final step so this is the, what are the things we have read now how it has been uh, uh what you do after uh, putting in the red bag what you're going to do again same so this is the first these are the things then what you do is that you do again pre-treatment what you do you do autoclave hydroclave whatever you can do autoclave hydroclave then what you do you do shredding you shred it okay or uh, mutilation and shredding you can do anything mutilate and shred it mutilation and shredding because the final final thing is that you're going to something called screw technology you're going to screw technology means technology means what happened these metal after shedding and mutilated they are used in making what roads road for making the road purpose etc these plastics can be used you know they mix with the natar and then make the road okay that's one of the this is a psm question so they ask you the screw technology okay the tight screw or cork screw technology they'll ask so basically after um, uh, autoclaving it they are these uh, particles are shredded mutilated and then you make the roads okay so this was also question asked okay so that's it so red bag is very simple red bag or recyclable r for r r for r yellow fellow fellow means all human human means animal microbe okay so we have finished uh, uh yellow and the red now second one i mean one second huh. so this is the second one huh. So second is a red bag. Red bag is no. And please remember, we are using always non-chlorinated bag. Even in yellow or red, doesn't matter. We are using non-chlorinated bag to because when you're the final step while you're burying or whatever you do need to prevent the what the uh, contamination. We are doing non-chlorinated and autoclave safe bag because we are doing pre-treatment autoclave before discarding. Finally, we have to do autoclave so that to prevent you know contamination to, to prevent the, the microbe getting contaminated with the workers. Okay, so that's another important point. Okay, so next red bag is over white punch up proof in white punch up proof very simple a white punch up proof see all somewhat everything you know when you talk white punch up proof all the metallic sharps metallic sharps metallic sharps metallic sharps okay metallic sharp w and m look similar so you can remember like that metallic sharps all the metallic sharps will go in this white container okay remember that this is another important point i'm sorry one second yeah okay so all the metallic shops the metallic shops what happened is go into this white transfer puncher proof container or we also call it this is the puncher proof container or white translucent container okay this is the one so what are the things goes in metallic shop we talk metallic shop the first thing which are the needles this question will be asked needles all the sharps blades needles sharps blades okay blades you can see here all this needle, just the needle, but not the plastic, but the needle part, the blades, sharps, any sharps, all these things goes in the wet translucent container. Okay, fine. Now, what to do with this? So these are metallic sharps. So how you, uh, how to, how to send it? So again, here, what you do, you do again, auto, uh, everything should be autoclaved. Okay, because to prevent the contamination, it has to be autoclaved. After autoclaving, again, you do what? Shredding, shredding mutilation. You can do shredding mutilation. Cut it into, I mean, mutilation, you cut it into the pieces. And then what you do, one important question here they'll ask you is, what is the thing we are going to do here? We are going to do encapsulation. Encapsulation. Encapsulation means you are mixing all these things with the cement. You make, you know, you mix with the cement, big, big cube, cement or metallic container. Metallic container. Okay. White color cement. Now, so remember like the white means white color cement. So white color cement, cement is white color. So white, anything in the white, what you do, you encapsulate it with a cement and metallic uh, container and then you use for building purpose. Okay. Building purpose. So that's the way you're discarding it. Okay. That was a question asked. Okay. So encapsulation, encapsulation done for what? White color, white color. Okay. That's it. This question also can be asked. This is the final way you're going to discard the white puncher proof container. Okay. All the metallic shafts. Okay. Now the fourth one. Now the fourth one is very simple one. Uh, the fourth one is cardboard box with the 
any cardboard box like this with a blue color marking should be there. That's it. Some, some places are using this blue color uh, container also, doesn't matter. But ideally what, it's just a cardboard box with this blue color marking. So blue, basically blue. So blue is very, very easy. How to remember blue? Two things. B for B, B for, you remember body implant, body implant. Okay, the shortcut would be body implant. And other one is your broken glasses, broken glasses, broken glasses. Two things, okay, broken glasses. The question is BB. So this question was repeatedly asked. Broken glasses, first of all, and talk about broken glasses, all these things. It could be what? In microbiology, the slides, micropatho, in laboratory slides, all the slides, okay, number one. Number two is the vials. All the drug, uh, all these drugs will be there, no vials, medicine vials, except cytotoxic, not the cytotoxic. Please don't, cytotoxic will go in, always cytotoxic will go in yellow, okay? So cytotoxic drugs is taken by the human, remember like that. And the slides, vials, or anything, broken glasses, any glasses broken, they all go into what? They go into the blue, 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 broken glass. Anything glass will go into this thing, okay? Remember, that was a question asked, okay? And next is... When we talk about implant, when we talk about the implant, we have a lot of implants. Okay, what are the implants here? The, the question was asked from the implants previously, I think in NEAT exam, they, are, they have asked, I saw that they asked this question. So what are the implants? Any implant, it could be a pacemaker. Pacemaker question was given. They asked pacemaker, discard in which one? They can ask a pacemaker, cochlear implant, cochlear implant, any implant, cochlear implant, joint implant, any joint implant also. Ortho, joint implant, and in gyne, it is the IUD, intrauterine device. That's also sort of implant. So these things will go into the blue bag. Now, final step. So final step, what to, how you're going to discard the final disposal. The final disposal is that what you do, all these items, what you have to do, you have to, first of all, treat it with the, treat it with the disinfectant. That is with 1% or 2% sodium hypochlorite, with the sodium hypochlorite. Right, and then what happened? These glasses and all can be recycled. So use do recycling. It is done to recycle the item. It recycles. You send it to the manufacturer or wherever. So they will do the recycling. Recycle is again coming here. Not only for red bag, you do recycling items there. You do all the thing uh, <coughs> making. Even here also, you recycle the item. Same. Even if, even the. Uh, um, your white transfer and all the needle shop you're making encapsulation cement and we are doing here also most of the things implants and everything can be manufactured and you can use it you can recycle it recycle the item that's it this for the blue color so definitely you can expect one or two questions from just the bmw biomedical waste management infection control biomedical waste management is a very very important role okay that's what i'm stressing so again and again these all are important questions you can expect questions from here okay right now next one symbols Symbols was the question, favorite question since my time was, I remember from my uh, PG time also, they were asking this question. And now also it is asked. So what are the important, uh, uh, here if you remember, this is the BMW symbol, biohazard symbol. Okay, biohazard symbol, you'll not forget. This is like this only, okay? This is a question asked. Other question was a C. C means cytotoxic. So cytotoxic drugs, in yellow bag, we saw this symbol was a cytotoxic drug. Chemical hazard or cytotoxic drug hazard, okay? Cytotoxic drug hazard. Okay, this C means C for C, cytotoxic. And this one, radiation may, old radiation hazard was this, but this is a new one, okay, like a fan. You can see like a fan and this dead, uh, you know, skull, this thing, okay. So that's a radiation hazard. They might ask you. So there are three symbols in BMW you should know. One is the biohazard, other one is a cytotoxic drug hazard, another one is a radiation hazard. That's it, okay. Then, next. Now, uh, now the hospital acquired infection control means, of course, the most important thing is your hospital acquired infection. When talking about hospital definition is any infection acquired more than 48 hours of, this is like standard question every time as more than 48 hours of admission. Okay, after admission, the more after admission hospital should take at least minimum 48 hours to get a uh, new infection. Any new infection after 48 hours of admission, number one. And no infection should be there during admission. At the time of admission, no infection at admission. No infection or infection with in, infection in the incubation period or any infection in incubation period. These two, 
okay it should not be there infection period there is no infection period also shouldn't be there at admission you shouldn't have the infection or the infection shouldn't be in the infection period at the time of admission okay a new infection after 48 hours of admission and the infection can occur after discharge also sometimes this hospital like infection can occur after occur after discharge also it can happen at the home also please remember that okay so main thing is that after 48 hours that's the question asked minimum Two days. It's like two days, but 48 hours, I remember. Okay. That is called an infection. That is the hospital acquired infection, or we also call it as what? Nosocomial. Nosocomial infection. They can ask you what, what is a nosocomial? Nosocomial is a hospital acquired infection, minimum 48 hours. And then it's a new infection after 48 hours. No infection should be present at the time of admission, or it, the infection shouldn't be in that incubation period. That's important. Okay. That's it. The infection can occur after discharge also. Can. Okay. Can. Now, what is this escape organism? Escape organisms are important for infection um, hospital. Uh, it causes the uh, hospital acquired infections. E, S, K, A, P, E. So what are the escape organisms? E for enter. There are two E's here. Yeah? One is the enterococcus. Enterococcus, especially fecium. Fecium. Um, um, um is dangerous. Uma is dangerous. Remember like that. See, when you talk about escape organism, these are highly multi-drug resistant. These are multi-drug resistant. Multi-drug resistant organism, multi-drug resistant, multi-drug resistant, multi-drug resistance organism. This escape which causes hospital acquired infection. One is enterococcus fecium. Okay. And one more E is that that is enterobacter, not E. coli. E. coli can cause hospital acquired infection, but it, it is not coming under the escape because escape is very dangerous. There is no uh, drug. <coughs> The all the almost all drugs are resistant. That's what we are putting in escape. So not E. coli. Remember that. So in escape, me E. coli will not come, but enterococcus enterobacter will come. Okay, remember that's one point. And yes, for you know our favorite Staphylococcus aureus. Staphylococcus aureus. Okay, aureus. K for Klebsiella. You know Klebsiella, especially Klebsiella pneumonia. When we talk Klebsiella, we talk Klebsiella pneumonia. Pneumonia. Okay. And A for Acinetobacter. A for Acinetobacter. Acinetobacter. Okay. And P for Pseudomonas. P for pseudomonas aeruginosa. Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So these are the escape organisms. Okay. Apart from that, the other you know, hospital infection could be any bacteria. It can be your E. coli, TB, Lord of Listeria, anything can be. But most important is escape means these are the this question can be asked. Which are the escape organisms? They can ask. So you have to remember this. Okay. Now, what are the mode of uh, transmission? So they can ask you which is the most common mode. The question was asked. I'm I'm sure you guys already know the answer. What is the answer? Which is the most common mode? It is the contact. Contact is the first most common mode is contact this is the most common route. Most common mode of hospital is contact. That's hand to hand. Usually the in option you can have hand to hand. Okay. Hand to hand touch or contact hand contact. That's the first most common one. That's a question. And second one is the through inhalation. So in inhalation can be two types. It can be inhalation can be two. Either it could be your the droplet. Droplet. And other one is your aerosol. In fact, COVID had both the types, if you remember, in COVID, droplet or aerosol. Aerosol is again airborne, you can say airborne. So now there are a few important things they can ask about difference between droplet and the aerosol. Uh, the question has not asked, but you can expect questions from here. So droplet means when the particle is what? When the size is more than 5 micrometer. Okay, when aerosol, the particle is less than 5 micrometer, the particle, whatever the particle, the dust particle, the small particles which is floating in the air or the microbe itself, it should be less than 5 mm. Okay, here the droplet should, uh, here that uh, the suspense is less than 5 mm. Okay, one, number one. So droplet means it's heavy. So usually it falls down. It's a heavy one. Droplet is heavy. So they usually fall down. That means they travel only short distance. Short distance. Droplet is small. So they travel long distance. They travel long distance and they can cause infection. That means more than three feet. They can travel more than three feet and can cause infection. So because this is traveling for short distance, here which mask is enough? Surgical mask is enough. For droplet prevention, surgical mask is enough. Okay, this is important point I'm going to stress here. But in aerosol, you need what? N95. N95 mask is needed for the aerosol. In COVID, we were doing because aerosol is one of the root for COVID. So it means for droplet is basically through the droplet, you have mostly bacterial infections like diphtheria and all other, most of the bacterial infections. Okay. Bacterial infections. Okay. But aerosol, 
you have got most of the viral infections. Viral infections can happen by the uh, aerosol. That's one point. Okay, so aerosol means most of viral infection. N95 mask you needed. Droplet is basically bacterial infection, and surgical mask is sufficient. Okay, that's it. This is the you know, mode of transmission. Now the types of hospital equipment. When you talk about type of hospital, there are two important questions here. Uh, then they ask about the type of the hospital uh, infection. The for what you're going to answer, what you're going to say is that uh, first one is UTI. It's the most common one. Urinary tract infection is the most common one. This question was asked. It's the most common. That's fine. Followed by UTI, you have other diseases. What your uh, pneumonia? Pneumonia. Then closely followed by surgical site infection, SSI, and the last one is your bloodstream infection. BSI, bloodstream infection. Okay, remember surgical site infection, bloodstream infection. Okay, SSI, BSI. That's it. UTI, urinary tract infection. The most common one is UTI. That will be, and you know, UTI most common cause is always E. coli, E. coli, E. coli, S. Risha, coli. Okay, in hospital acquired infection, this is the most common one. Now, there are parameters. See, that is a type of infections, hospital acquired infection, but there are parameters, surveillance parameters. Means we are doing a surveillance to see which infection is more common when the patients are admitted in the hospital, especially in ICU. Okay. So we are checking that. So for that, there are parameters are called as, we call it as C-A-U-T-I, Cow-T. So don't get confused. It's a U-T-I, but then I'll tell the full form once again. And CLAPSI, CLAPSI, CLAPSI is B-S-I, so bloodstream infection. And the other one is your uh, V-A-P or V-A-E, that is pneumonia or event. I'll tell you that also. The last one is surgical site infections, SSI. So, okay, so these are the four parameters we are using for the surveillance parameters for surgical site infections. Okay, especially the first three are very, very, very important. Okay, uh, now, 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 we are going to the individual and we'll talk about it. Cauti is basically catheter associated. Catheter associated UTI, urinary tract infection associated. This is a common one, it's the most common one. Okay, so like UTI, CAUTI, same only. Catheter is the most common one. For CLAPSI also, CLAPSI is central line. Okay, so central line, central line, if you remember, central line they put here, or femoral. So central line, bloodstream infections. And other VAP is basically ven ventilator associated pneumonia or event. You can sometimes, some places they call this pneumonia, some places they call this an event. Okay. Pneumonia and SSI is basically surgical site infection, surgical site infection, surgical site infection. That's it. Okay. So the first three are the most important one, but SSI is also important. Okay. So all these four things will come under the surveillance parameters, surveillance parameters. So you should at least know the terms of these are important. Okay. So to, they'll confuse you. So you have to know exactly like this. Now, prevention of HZ. So, you know, which is the most, that question was, this question was frequently asked, if you remember, which is the most uh, common way to prevent the surgical site infection. The first one is what? Hand hygiene. Hand hygiene is the first way. Or standard precautions, hand hygiene. Okay, this is the most common way to prevent. Okay, most common, the best way to prevent the, this thing. This is also a question asked. Hand hygiene, hand hygiene, hand hygiene. Most important. Then, of course, second one is your PPE. Personal protective equipment like all your uh, gloves, masks, you know, mask, gloves, head cover, all those things. Okay, face shield, etc. Yeah, PPE. Third one would be your BMW management, your proper BMW care. And fourth one will be spill management. Any spill, are we are going to talk about this also. Spill management, the questions are asked in spill management also. Spill management. And the other one is disinfecting. Disinfecting all your working place. Disinfecting the all disinfectant use. Okay, these are the five important ways to prevent the hospital acquired infection. Okay, excuse me. The most important one was your hand hygiene. Okay, we finished with that. Now, hand hygiene, two things. Uh, well, you should know again, hand hygiene is very important. Examiner's favorite question. You know that from PSM point also, it's very, very important. They ask. So, hand hygiene are two things. One is your hand rub. Hand rub. And the other one is your hand wash. And two things are there. Here, most important thing to remember is uh, for patient routine care. Routinely, when you're checking patient, you know, from one patient to another person, when you're when you're checking uh, on the morning rounds or whatever, hand rub is sufficient. You don't have to do the hand wash. So, what are the things are here? Hand rub. What is how much? What is the percentage of alcohol? Seventy to eighty percentage ethanol. We are using ethanol. Okay. Ethanol is the best answer. This is the right answer. Okay, isopropyl alcohol. Ethanol is the right answer. 70 80% ethanol with cyclic or not. Okay, that's it. This is one question. Hand wash is just simply we're using a soap. So whenever 70 80% ethanol, so what is the use of this hand rub? Is we are having five hand moments. 
hand moments. What are the five hand moments? If you see this picture, it is like this before, very how to remember two things, remember like this. Before touching the patient, before touching the patient and after touching the patient, after touching the patient during the morning rounds. And again, before any procedure, before any procedure you do, means you're putting a cannula or catheter or any procedure to the patient. And again, after the procedure, you can do the hand rub. And the last one is after touching the patient surrounding, after touching the patient's surrounding. Very, very easy. After touching the patient's surrounding, this is the five moments of hand hygiene. Not before, not before patients are. That could be the in question. You will always get this only. They will tell which are the following or the five moments of hand hygiene, except. So in that they might give you before patients are before you can no need to put a hand rub only after the patient surrounding. So not the patient is surrounding, maybe spill or bed or those things. So after touching it accidentally. Okay. Otherwise, the five moments of before touching the patient, after touching the patient touch okay before touching after touching the patient it's here in this picture also you can see but this is the five moments of hand hygiene that's very important now frequently asked question is hand wash indication when you do the hand wash the most important indication for hand wash means probably we have to wash with the soap means when when is that when you have soiled when there is a soil uh, visible soiled glove soiled hand do you see any visible pus or uh, blood touched your gloves and immediately remove the gloves and wash it with the soap properly. And one more thing, for hand rub you have to do for how much? 20 to 40 seconds. 20 to 40 seconds. This question was asked one time, sorry. 20 to 30 seconds. 20 to 30 seconds. Hand wash you will do 40 seconds to 60 seconds. Double it. Double this, okay? Double this. 20 to 30, double it, 40 to 60. Hand wash should be at least for one minute you will be doing. So 40, this question was asked. 20 to 30 seconds you will do hand rub and hand wash you will do 40 to 60 seconds. Okay. So any soiled uh, visible particles you see on the gloves, number one. Number two, before uh, food, before eating. Before eating, definitely have to do a hand wash, not hand rub. And other one is toilet. After toilet, you have to use another one, duty. When you're doing the duty before and after, after, before duty and after the duty, you have to do the hand wash. This question was asked, especially the soiled gloves was asked frequently. They say this, which is the main indication for hand wash, hand wash with soap is this one. Okay, and then you know all those things, washing palm to palm, back to back, fingertips, thumbs, and interdigital, all those things also, knuckles, etc. Okay, and the wrist part. Those are the five uh, types. Okay, so these are five moments of hygiene. How you do this? Okay, now finish this. A hand hygiene. Okay, please remember the main hand hygiene is the main way to prevent the hospital acquired infection. That's what they can ask any question from the hand hygiene. Needle stick injury. Needle stick injury. Before going to needle stock injury, first thing you see this picture. The main thing to needle stick injury is no recapping. Remember, no recapping. After after doing any procedure, you are either giving injection or you're taking the blood or cannula, whatever you're doing, never after removing, don't try to put it back. See, this is this picture. You can accidentally prick the prick your finger while you're closing. So don't do it. After removing, what you do after removing, you do the procedure and then needle should directly go into where into your puncture proof container and the plastic part should go after then you take it and put the blood into whatever procedure you did and then the plastic part would go into the which one to your recyclable so red bag the, the plastic part would red and the needle will go into the white transparent container that's it okay please remember that okay now needle stick into one question which infection has a highly transmitted chance hepatitis b virus this question was also 30 percentage highest chance of infection is hepatitis b then hcv three percentage and your hiv would be only HIV is only 0.3 percent. This question also was a 333 3, 3, rule of three. Okay, this question HIV highest in in a blood needle stick injury, which is the most commonly spread infection, is hepatitis B virus only. That's one point to remember. Now, when you get a needle stick injury, what are the steps? That was a question asked in your uh, previous some exam. I don't need or aims. They have asked this question, so you have to know because again, this is important topic. That's what. So, what to do when you get a needle stick injury? What are the steps? So the first thing you have to do is that wash your hand. Wash hand. Wash your hand for how many? How many? For five minutes. Minimum five minutes. Okay. No antiseptic. No antiseptic should be used. No antiseptic or disinfectant. You're going to harm your thing and the infection can go more. So don't do anything. And no squeezing. No squeezing the finger. You don't squeeze and don't suck your fingers. Those things are wrong methods. Okay. No, uh, no squeeze. 
are no uh, sucking, no sucking of the fingers, no sucking and no squeezing of the fingers. This one thing, no antiseptic disinfectant, no squeezing and no sucking of the fingers. That's one thing. Okay, no antiseptic and no disinfectant, no squeezing and no sucking. Let's remember. Okay, and the next. Uh, after washing the hand, the next step is to inform to the nodal officer. You have to inform to the nodal officer. Second step is informing to the nodal officer. After nodal officer, you have to start the first dose of first dose of post-exposure prophylaxis of HIV. You have to start. The regimen is according to CDC. I mean, you. I'm sure you would have read in uh, pharmacology. It's a TLLR regimen. You should be called. Okay. Uh, Tirifovir, Lamivirin, uh, Lopinovir, Retinovir. I'm not going to go in detail. So you have to take the first dose of the PEP. The next is what? Do a, uh, do a diagnosis. You do a lab test. You do a rapid test. You do a rapid test for rapid test for what? All H hepatitis B virus, antibody, HCV and HIV. Whatever the test for HBS, AG antigen you do for uh, HBV. HCV and HIV do the antibody test. Both patient and the healthcare worker and the doctor or whoever okay healthcare worker hcw both of them have to do the test you take the sample and do the rapid test and after rapid test now you have to start you have to finish the complete the course of complete the course of post exposure prophylaxis of hiv again the regimen could be tllr or TLE also, TLE regimen also, some places they're using TFAVIRANS, no? TNFAVIR, LAMIVIRIN, FAVIRANS combination, this also, okay, this combination, this is more in Parma, they will, uh, medicine, they will tell you, but I'm telling you in advance, and what happened, one important thing here is, when you are HBS AG, when you're doing the titer anti-HBS antibody, sorry, anti-HBS antibody titer, if it is less than 10 international unit, 10 international unit is a question. You have to give what? Both immunoglobulin and vaccine. The healthcare worker, the doctor should take both immunoglobulin and the vaccine. If it is more than 10 to the power international, nothing to do. Okay, that's also a question. So remember, two things you do. Complete course of PEP is one thing. And then other one is your taking for anti HBS less than you have to give immunoglobulin and vaccine. Okay. This is the rapid, uh, this is the next step. And the last step is follow-up. Follow-up means after completing the medicine, their doctors will tell you to come after 15 days to, to repeat the test or whatever. So you don't have to do follow-up. Meanwhile, you will be taking the medicine completely. Okay. And remember, the do the HIV, when you're taking the medicine, it, you should take it within 72 hours. Then only it's effective. More than 72 hours, not effective. Remember, the prophylactic post prophylactic factor, if you get injury, please take it within 72 hours. Then only it will be effective. Otherwise, it's not effective. Okay. So these are all our questions. Three questions can be asked. And again, washing the hand for five minutes is also a question. Also a question. That's what I'm stressing on heuristic injury. The first question is HBV as a higher risk. Second and five minutes hand wash and no antiseptic, no disinfectant. And first dose should be taken within 72 hours. And when you do a complete course treatment for PEP. The treatment for HBS agent started only when the HBS agent titer is less than 10, 10, uh, 10 international unit for the doctor, whoever you go, whoever got the needle stick injury. So these are the important questions will be asked. Okay, got it? So once again, I'm, I, I just want to highlight this part. Please don't forget the 72 hour, five minutes, and then less than 10 international unit and HBS agent uh, titer should be less than. So these are the important things you will know the needle stick injury. Okay, right. Now next one, spill management. Spill management is another very easy topic. Nothing to worry here. There should be two things. You have a small spill and a large spill. When you talk about the spill, what is the spill means here? Small spill and large spill. Okay, when you talk about the spill, a spill is usually a blood. Usually it is blood, but it can be anything. When you talk about spill, when the blood is spilled and in hospital, when you're taking blood sample or whatever, or patient vomits, or you know your CSF spill anything blood vomit mm, fecus or uh, CSF any infected fluid no that is a spill when you talk about small spill the spill which is fall on the ground should be less than ten centimeter if it is more than ten centimeter approximately you will say it's a large spill right this is first question ten ten okay less than ten small more than ten is large spill. And we are using what? We are using 5% hypochlorite to clean that. Now, you will put, how do you do this? When there's a spill, you will put a lot of, you will segregate the area, put a lot of cottons to absorb, cotton or newspaper to absorb it. And after removing that, I mean, after putting all these things, what you have to pour? Hypochlorite. 5% hypochlorite, but the dilution is 1 is to 100 dilution. 
But here, same 5% hyperchlorite, but you're using what? 1 is to 10 dilution. 1 is to 10 dilution. That means that finally it will be 0.5 percentage hypo for large spill. Here it will be 0.05 percentage hypo for the small spill. Okay, that's it. This you remember. And then minimum for both the cases, you have to leave this hypochlorite solution on the spill for 10 minutes. That's also a question. So everything is again based on the numbering only here important. Okay. So please remember again, I'm going to stress here. So 10, 10, more than 10, less than 10. Dilution is the one is to 100 dilution. Here's one is to 10 dilution because it's a large spill. So the concentration should be a little bit more and both minimum 10 minutes, 10 to 30 minutes ideally, but 10 minutes minimum you have to leave the hypochlorite solution on the spill. That's this for the spill management. Very, very simple. Okay, that's what, if you remember, many questions asked, a patient is a HIV patient, HIV positive patient, HIV positive patient, the blood was spilled. So how you will manage means, how do you manage? The main thing is that you're going to use the hypochlorite solution. You pour the hypochlorite solution, depending on small spill, large spill, and then clean with the uh, material, whatever. Okay, mop it up. So hypochlorite cleans very, because in hypochlorite itself, the HIV will be killed. So I remember in my exam, during my uh, PG time, I had this question. So hypochlorite is important. That's it. Okay, spill management. Then Now, uh, now the next topic, the environment surveillance somewhat closer to, it's not infection control basically, but it is a, a sort of a surveillance question. Very, very simple. And I saw the questions have also been asked from this part. It's very simple. So to check the bacteriology of the water, whether the water is pure or not, you, you can do some tests. So what are they? First of all, there are two things. One is the, to check the remote contamination. Remote contamination means it's a previous contamination. You can't say it is a recent one. It could be any time. We don't know remote contamination. Or uh, there's other tests for recent contamination. Recent contamination means present. At present, the contamination happened just now, recently. Okay, that's the point. So for remote contamination, for the remote contamination, there are a lot of things. One is coliform. All the coliforms except E. coli. Okay, except remember, except E. coli. E. coli will not come here. All coliform is, I'm talking about Klebsiella, Enterobacter, all the things which is present in your colon. That's the Enterobacter, etc. Okay, coliform. So coliform also tells about the re remote contamination. And you have fecal streptococci. This also, fecal streptococcus also talks about what your remote contamination. So question was asked here, all other questions important, remote, remote. And your close to idiom, perfringence also, close to idiom, perfringence. Also talks about remote. And some uh, bacteriophage, some bacteriophage study of this coliform also tells about the remote. And sometimes pseudomonas also reducing, it's not a proper good indicator, so I'm not talking about here, bacterio Phage, bacterio, bacteriophage, okay, bacteriophage, it's not a bacteria, it's a virus, okay, one of the indicator. So they basically these all are called of remote. Recent contamination, which is the answer, E. coli, this is the question, <clears throat> E. coli, especially it is the thermotolerant, we call it as thermotolerant E. coli, we call it as thermotolerant E. coli, which is a very, very important question and this is talking about recent E is the re, E, E, E. Two E's are there. E, E. So it's E. coli. E. coli. Okay, remember. This question was asked repeatedly. So your remember thermotron E. coli is the confirmatory test. The quality indicator confirmatory. Quality test or so confirmatory test for water contamination. So if you want to confirm the water is contaminated, you have to, there have to be E. coli. Okay. So how to do this test? So whenever you get a water sample, so let's say this is the water sample you're getting. Okay, this is the water sample. This is the water sample. You have to test it. So we do this method. This is called tube method, multiple tube method. We call this multiple tube method. Multiple tube method is not very complicated, very simple. You don't have to know everything. I'm just really briefing it up. Multiple tube method, you're taking one important thing is that you take a lactose broth in different, uh, in five sets of bottle, 10 ml bottle, 1 ml bottle and 0, 0.0 ml of this lactose broth. Lactose broth is also called as what? Mekongki. McConkey lactose broth. Okay, they are same. This question was asked. Which is the broth used for checking the water surveillance? Miss McConkey lactose broth is used. So three sets of tube, you put the water and then you add in the tubes, you have 10 ml water, 1 ml water, 0 0.1 ml of water, you add it and then leave it for overnight incubation. Next day, if you see the color change, like yellow color, that's positive. So here is four positive, two positive. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So based on number of things are positive, we are giving. So we are giving the, uh, it is the water, we say the water is, it's not confirmatory, it's a presumptive truth. We just say water is satisfactory or not. Satisfactory or not. That's it. We say only satisfactory or not because it's a presumptive test. So to confirm it, so to confirm what we are doing is that, so for confirmatory test, which is a confirmatory test to check the water surveillance or water contaminator or if the question asked, that is the A Jack man test, a Jack man test. A Jack man test was a question asked many times in your exam. You can check a Jack man test is a confirmatory. E for a Jack man, E for Esterisha Cole. We are checking for Esterisha Cole. I told Esterisha Cole is a confirmatory test for the Water contamination, equal, 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 recent contamination. In a document test, it's very, very simple. You're just using the brilliant bile broth. You don't need to remember the name. Just remember BB. Brilliant bile broth uh, solution you use. In that solution, we are doing indole test positive. Indole test is positive plus gas formation is there. And indole is important question. Indole is positive for equal, equal, equal. Remember that question was asked many times. So if these two are positive, then that is the equal confirm. At least remember ejectment E I A K. Okay. A lot of E, e names have a lot of, we have electrical precipitation test, we have ejectment test, a lot of E, e test. Okay. So I remember this is very important. A can test, a lot of tests. We, we will you know microbiology revision in coming in one or two days. That time we will talk about all the E test. Okay. So remember, so this is a confirmatory test, ejectment test you have done. Okay. So this is the for water, for milk. Milk again, I saw the question was asked in milk and uh, we are almost coming to the end now. So, batteries of milk, what you do is that we have to check the, um, first of all, the normal milk. Normal milk means not pasteurized, just freshly the milk has taken, uh, come from the former uh, cow. Other one is the pasteurized milk. How to check the, whether milk is pasteurized properly or not. So, two things are there. There are two important questions. For normal milk, what is the thing you're going to do is, you're going to do which test? Methylene blue methylene blue reduction test yeah methylene blue reduction test so you will check for the color change like this the color should change normally white color after methylene blue if the color changes immediately the infections are more if it takes some time for the color change then infection is less so methylene blue test is for checking the regular milk but for pasteurized milk what are the tests available one is p4p phosphatase this is the best test phosphatase test is the Effectiveness, it's the one that uh, tells about the effectiveness of pasteurization. This question was asked many times. Remember, okay, passport test test. But not only passport test test, we can do also other tests, turbidity test and a standard plate count, standard plate count. I mean, you're checking for the colony count, okay, test. Also, you can do coliform test also, coliform. So these all are coliform tests. These all are talks about the past milk is pasteurized or not, but not methylene blue. Remember that question, in a, uh, usually in the question you will have methylene blue. Methylene blue is not for pasteurized milk. That is for your normal milk. That question was asked many times. So please, it's easily one question you should, you might make mistakes. So remember that, okay? Methylene milk for normal milk. Pasteurized milk, P4P, phosphatase. Phosphatase, test, pasteurized milk. That's it, okay? Yeah. Now, last topic, air. Air, Kelly, just you should know there are three methods. That's it. But to check the bacteriology in the air, in the air, whether we have bacteria or not, to uh, check three methods. One is the first method. This is called settle plate. Settle plate means you just leave the plates in the open somewhere near the window or the wall. Somewhere nearby you leave it. What happens? The air, the the dust particles, what it will fall. Down. You leave it for some you know uh, hours, and the air particles fall. Then you close it in the culture plate. You know, you close the culture plate, leave incubation. Next day you will count how many colonies, and accordingly you will give. Especially for OT, GT, and all, you are doing this. The normal method, easy method. Second one is this method. This is the air sampler or vacuum method. Air sampler or vacuum pump or it's the vacuum pump method. Third method. So what happened here? If you're measuring the amount of, you can measure the amount of air going inside this uh, vacuum and then it re there's a culture plate there. So that will go into that culture plate. Then you incubate it, the petri dish incubate and next day you check the colony. Same like this will occur. So here it will be more accurate. Here you can't count how much air particular went on. Here based on the amount of air is sent in the vacuum, you can count and so air sampler vacuum method. Okay, in a culture plate. The last one is laser. In laser is very important. Laser directly you can check the air car, particular room air. 
in the laser if you see any particles hanging that particles you can count and you can say so there are three methods to check the bacteriology of the air there are uh, settler plate settler plate method hash sampler vacuum pump method and the laser method that's it very very simple okay so if you know this then that's it so that's all so we finished about the infection control so whatever topics you to definitely in this all topic one or two questions sure either micro part or from psm part or anything or it could be surgical question also whatever it is so we be ready. So you can score easy one or two questions very easily. Okay, definitely expected question. Or maybe more three also. You never know. Okay. So once again, all the best. So do well. Soon we will uh, go for uh, other class.